Molly's Hollow. The origin of the haunting known as Molly's Hollow in Jackson Park Vary. What is known is that around midnight, people have reported hearing a terrible shrieking voice continuously crying out Molly. Often the horrible screaming is accompanied by the apparition of a woman hanging in a tree. The most popular history of Molly's Hollow states that a beautiful young woman, known only as Molly, got in a fight with her boyfriend in the park on prom night. Her boyfriend drove off and left her in the park. The next day, Molly was found hanging in the tree, her clothes torn. It is unknown if her death was a suicide or a murder. Another history of Molly's Hollow states that Molly was an African-American girl that was lynched by a white mob many years ago. New Century Air Center This location is the former Othal Naval Air Station, a combat pilot training center from World War II through the Vietnam era. The base was turned over to the local Johnson County government in the early 1970s and converted into a commercial airport, industrial complex, and business center. Sometime, in the late 1950s or early 60s, a botched night landing in bad weather resulted in a pilot losing his life when he missed the runway and ended up a ball of JP-4 fire in the side of an aircraft hangar. This hangar complex, onto which the airport control tower is now connected, is the current home to an Army Reserve helicopter unit. Paranormal events occur throughout this building. The security guards report voices, whistling, footsteps on the floor, and on overhead catwalks. Locks refuse to stay locked, and doors open and close without wind or human intervention. Even the occasional apparition makes an appearance. The New Century Air Center was featured on an A&E special called Haunted America. The Blue Albina Woman Well known around Topeka, Kansas is the Blue Albina Woman. She was once a resident of Topeka, and the residents of the town would often torment her. She had the distinction of a bluish-white skin tone with a long bleach-white hair. She was said to be very strange, but most would tell you that she was just eccentric. So hated was the woman that she was dragged out to the Rochester Cemetery and buried alive by some local thugs and scumbags. It's said that she now walks the ground of that cemetery and should you enter at night, she will make you never forget your visit. In fact, hundreds of locals and visitors claim to have seen her. As recently as 2013, she left her mark on local Jessica Streeter. Jessica and her boyfriend thought the cemetery to be a perfect location to have some romantic fun. They laid out a blanket and were getting into it when Jess says a hand came up out of the ground. And soon, there was a crazy-eyed witch. According to the couple, she scratched them and even tried to choke Jessica. In another incident, a young boy named James was in a department store with his mother when he happened upon some mannequins. He didn't think much of it until one horrible-looking one turned to face him. He screamed and ran to his mother. Once in her arms, he pointed, and there, still standing, was the blue albino woman. Then he claims that she just glided past them right out the door. Or more so through the door. Other people have come forward saying that they've had run-ins with her as well. You can do a search and find many stories about these encounters on forums and boards. Kansas State University 
One of the college's most famous haunted spots is the Purple Maskate Theater, which is located on the main floor of the East Stadium on campus. The theater is alleged to be haunted by a mischievous spirit that goes by the name of Nick, who has never been seen, although his voice has been recorded on tape. It's believed that the ghost is that of an ex-football player who died in the building in the 1950s when it was still used as an athletic center. It's said that he was injured one day during a practice and was brought into the building, where he soon died. His playful spirit has been here ever since, stomping up and down hallways, on staircases, and on the stage theater. He also moves chairs and hides theater props at night, but he is most famous for his levitations. Wooden boxes that have been stacked in the dressing room have jumped to the floor and then restacked themselves before the startled eyes of several witnesses there's also a report of a fire extinguisher that has been spinning around in mid-ear spraying white foam as it traveled. Another hotspot is the Phi Gamma Delta Fraternity House. The house is believed to be haunted by the spirit of Duncan, a former student who died in the house while it was occupied by the Theta Xi Fraternity. His death was said to have occurred during an initiation ceremony when the pledges were bending over to be paddled. When it came to Duncan's turn, he stood up and was accidentally struck in the head. It's said that the blow was a fatal one, and he died a short time later. The first reports of Duncan's ghost came in 1965, shortly after Phi Gamma Delta bought the house. The rumor Theta Xi had stored their paddles was converted into a library, and two paddles were left hanging on the wall one of which had Duncan's name on it. The new fraternity brothers removed the paddles and painted the walls, but mysteriously an image of the paddle, which bore Duncan's name, kept appearing on the wall as a dark stain. Finally, they ended up paneling the wall. In the years that have passed, reports of encounters with Duncan continued to be collected. The sound of phantom footsteps are very common, as are lights that flicker on and off and doorknobs being turned on their own. A quick check in the hallway always reveals that no one of this world is present in that corridor. Located in the old St. Mary's Hospital building is the Delta Sigma Phi fraternity. When they moved into the building many years ago, they found that something had been left behind by the previous tenants two residing spirits. The building was haunted by a former patient and long-forgotten nurse. The patient had been the last person to die while it was still a hospital, and his death was a strange one. As the place was closing down, the elderly patients were moved to a new hospital. The patient somehow rolled off his bed and was trapped between it and the wall. The nurse checked the third floor room. He thought that the room was empty and the old man died there that same night. The new tenants of the house had never seen the patient, but they have heard him. He pounds up and down the third floor hallway at night, turns the lights on and off, and genuinely just makes himself a nuisance. One night in 1973, an ice storm kicked out all of the power on the street for a number of days. Somehow, every afternoon at 4 p.m., the television would turn on and play a return of an old Star Trek episode. No other house on the street had electricity, and there was no explanation of why this worked. And the nurse? Well, she isn't there anymore. Until the late 1960s, a nurse walked through the first floor halls of the old hospital late at night, carrying a medicine tray in one hand and a candle in the other. One day, she just never came back again. Maybe she just realized that the new occupants of this building no longer required her care. 
Uh, the Kappa Sigma fraternity house is also said to be haunted by a ghost of a boy who hanged himself in the filing room. Since his suicide, residents have heard all sorts of strange sounds, particularly the sounds of someone jumping off the roof. They have often heard the sounds, but never find a living person to whom they can be attributed. The ghost here is also sometimes seen. One night, while playing cards, one of the residents heard a strange sound upstairs. He left the first floor room, where the poker game was being held, and saw a white haze appear at the top of the staircase. His companion saw nothing, arriving too late to his summons. And a search of the house revealed that there was nobody else inside. Stull Cemetery Pretty much anybody who grew up in Kansas or watches the show Supernatural knows about the Stull Cemetery, even if they've never seen it. While there may be about a million variations on the story, everyone knows that Stull Cemetery is one of the seven gateways to hell, which only opens at midnight on Halloween. On the appointed hour, a hidden secret staircase becomes unsealed. The stairs are said to appear and then lead down into a grave, but they're actually a direct passage to the underworld. So if you ever find these stairs, you must never go down them because you'll never come back. From there, the tales vary, with accounts claiming that Satan himself comes forth on Halloween night to hold court in the cursed cemetery. Some versions, he comes to visit the grave of his infant son, while others maintain that it is the grave of a witch that the Prince of Darkness visits with who was the mother of his son, who also appears at the scene as a werewolf. Many legends surround Stull Cemetery, center on an old stone church that stood there from 1867 until 2002. The Evangelical Emanuel Church was built by the town's original Pennsylvania Dutch settlers, who held their services in German until about 1908. The church then sat empty for much of the 20th century, its roof starting to collapse and its walls beginning to crumble, even as strange stories cluster tightly around it. The church was said to have been used by Satanists, witches, covens, and cults for their rituals. Though it had no roof, by the time these groups supposedly gathered here, it was said that rain would never fall within its walls. Other accounts claim that it was impossible to break a glass bottle inside of that church. Next to the church was a tall pine tree which grew up through and split a headstone. According to stories, the tree was used to hang witches before the land was concentrated as a churchyard. The church and the tree were often held to be signposts helping to point the way to the gate of hell. In 1998, on the day before Halloween, the tree was cut down in order to deter thrill-seekers. Stoll's status as the location of one of the gateways of hell is well known that it inspired an album by the band Urge Overkill, featuring images of Stoll Cemetery on the album cover. It was also used in the plots of several movies, including the satanic villains in Turbulence 3, who plan to crash a plane into Stull Cemetery in order to release Satan. The film also makes use of an urban legend that when the Pope visited Colorado in 1995, he diverted his plane around Kansas, so he did not fly over unhallowed ground. I hope you ghouls enjoyed these Kansas urban legends. I really liked researching these ones. They were really interesting. I knew Kansas had some good stuff, and I, I knew that the Stull Cemetery was here. Super excited. 
Sorry if I sound stuffy or snuffly. I think I'm getting whatever the fuck Trevor has. So yeah, if I sound a little weird, that's why I apologize. Um, for those of you who give a fuck, my sister's baby is here and I am now Auntie Ghoulish. And I'm excited. She's a sweetheart. She's adorable. I'm trying to get her to come up here for a week like my sister and the baby. But so far, I guess she doesn't want to. Boo! I'm cool, right? Am I cool, ghouls? <laughs> All right. Question of the day. Little weird. What would you name your child? Or if you have kids, which I know a lot of you actually do, what did you name them? Obviously, my son's name is Jude. If he was a girl, I was going to name her Prudence. Obviously, I'm a Beatles fan. But let me know in the comments. Because I know when I was little, I had so many names picked out when I was a little. When I was like 17, I was like, ooh, ooh, I want to name my kid this and this. And my, I remember the first thing I always wanted to name my son was Aiden. But I'm glad I didn't because everybody named their fucking boys Aiden or Jaden or Caden. So I'm glad I avoided that. And when I was the same age, I wanted to name a girl Ebony Aurora because I thought it was the fucking coolest name ever. So let me know in the comments. As always, ghouls, the last video will be on the top left. The next video will be on the bottom left. All my social medias are on the screen as well as in the description box below. And remember, there's always someone or something watching you.